There is a lot, and I mean a lot, of loot in World Long Fallen Dynasty. Today, we're going to break down the whole blacksmithing thing, how to upgrade, but more specifically, how the jewel embedding works, because it's kind of confusing why some jewels can be extracted and some can't and what they are. So we're going to break all this information down. Let's go. Let me know how your day is going. Let's start with blacksmithing and upgrading and looting and all that stuff. And then we'll get into the nitty gritty of the jewel embedding system. So to upgrade your weapons and your armor, you already know this, you go to the blacksmith and you trade them three pieces of either steel or leather to upgrade a particular item. And it will improve like the base attack and its attack bonus if it's a weapon. And if it's armor, it'll just improve its armor rating. Now you will need the rank whatever, like rank X of steel or leather to in order to upgrade it. And you need three of them to upgrade each piece. Now, most of these like steel and leather is found throughout the world and the most consistent way to farm these materials is to complete battlefields where at the end of the battlefield you get like rank X steel or leather and just keep like grinding that and repeating it and you'll constantly get that reward for completing that battlefield. You can also get one of these materials by salvaging a piece of gear. Say if you've got like a plus two sword and you salvage that, you'll get one of the rank two steel as like your reward for salvaging it plus the jewel fragments. Most of the best gear, however, except a couple of sets don't actually come from dropping out in the world like most of the gear that you'll find. The best gear at its max rarity typically comes from leveling up your allies and becoming sworn brothers with them. So when you reach an oath level 10 with any of your allies you become a sworn brother and they'll give you copies of their gear these copies are four star rarities so they have like maximum amount of embedding slots that you can have for these sorts of gears but they are also a complete set so you'll also have a weapon plus the armor to complete a set bonus as all the allies have that full set so if you're looking at say making a fire build you want to find a fire ally and just have them with you all the time so that you level up their oath or use the cup of cordiality to just speed up that process they'll give you copies of their gear and then you've got a full set of armor and you can use all the bonuses with that set completely it's also possible to get gear from the accolades rewards and this is probably the best way to get some of the different jewel embeddings and to keep like rolling different things which we'll talk about in the next section but what accolades are is that every time you avenge another player you'll get a like 200 accolades or something and once you've unlocked the gentleman that you can respec from at the hidden village you'll also have the accolades rewards which you can buy various things from him but you can also like like roll particular weapons or armor and if you go all the way to the end you'll get like the three or four star gear which will give you heaps of different attachments now none, this gear isn't going to be great sometimes you can get good pieces out of this like for example i've been trying to get a four star hammer but it's not really working out but that's not really for this video i've been trying to make a hammer build but anyway so that's basically the main things to do with gear and upgrading but it's all about jewel embedding that's really the important thing and figuring out how all this stuff works so firstly any piece of gear will have a certain amount of embedding slots. A one star gear will have one, two star will have two, three star will have three, four star four, and in New Game Plus, there is five star level gear, which will have five star embedding slots. You'll also notice that gear that has set bonuses won't actually have that full amount of slots. Say if you've got like a four star piece of gear that has a set bonus, it'll only have three embedding slots. This is because the set bonus itself counts as an embedding slot. So some of this gear will have like say two embedding slots and then a set bonus Bonus, whereas some will have three, the ones that don't have the embedding slot. So that's, I guess, like the trade-off. Say if you're wearing gear that doesn't have a set bonus, you get that extra slot to then do something with. So it's really dependent on what sort of builds you're doing and if you could do something valuable with that extra slot compared to actually using set bonuses. Though in most cases, set bonuses are probably the more beneficial thing for certain builds. Before you even consider changing any of these jewels or anything like that, you will need some jewel fragments. Now, jewel fragments you get from salvaging different pieces of gear and and because you get so much gear in this game, it's the main way that you will get jewel fragments and get rid of that gear is by salvaging all of these random pieces you get. Now you can select multiple pieces and salvage them all at once rather than doing them all individually, which does take a very long time. And as mentioned, if the piece of gear is like of a particular rank, you'll get one of those materials. And also if it does have a special effect, it'll actually extract this and just add it to your resources as well. Some of these jewel fragments, not all of them are like special and you need to actually have copies of them before you can embed them into 
certain pieces of gear. The way you can identify these, it'll have this little squiggly, circly symbol on them. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's this little squiggly symbol. And you can also tell by if you're going into salvaging gear, when you're like scrolling through the list, the salvage jewels section will actually show what item you'll get from salvaging that piece of gear. So there are benefits to taking these and these are typically the stronger jewels that you can put onto gear and that will give you a significant bonus, especially the ones that apply either buffs to yourself or debuffs to enemies. You really want to focus on these and if they fit within your build, obviously, because they'll get the most bang for your buck. Other than just salvaging gear, you can just remove particular jewels from gear by going into the embedment section and choosing a slot and just removing it. Now, you'll notice that some of these special effects you can't actually remove. The best way to notify this is because the little symbol will have like an extra bit at the end. So if it's like a red symbol, it'll have like an extra square, like the square will be full. Same as if it's green, it'll be a full green square. Whereas if the ones that you can remove are like a rectangle, so they're much shorter. It's really about these little icons. Now the ones that have set bonuses, that set bonus is the one you can't remove, right? So on gear that has a set bonus, you can remove all of the different jewels, but the ones that don't, there'll be one specific like jewel that you can't actually remove. So this is important to note when you're considering what gear you're going to use and how you're going to use it because of those different pieces that you can either put on or can't put on that sort of thing. So now that we're equipping different jewels, it comes down to what sort of jewels you want to actually put on your gear. And I guess the simplest thing is to only put jewels on that are actually going to benefit your build. I think like one of the easiest ones is like just straight damage dealt because the more damage you do, you know, the, the better or like, you know, removing the damage received that you do are really beneficial. But also the special effects ones are just significantly overpowered and you'll see in all of my builds and probably everyone else's builds on the old YouTube that they will be using these special effects, whether it be for wizardry spells or for fatal strikes, that sort of thing to apply buffs and debuffs to yourself and your enemies because it's just a simple way to get value from these jewels. You can also check all of your effects or your current effects and where they're at in the status screen by going and looking at the different effects as will show you a breakdown of everything you have active at any given time. I'd also mention as well that ranged weapons though in a lot of builds you probably won't use them and to be honest I completely forget that ranged weapons exist half the time. You can change the jewels that are on your ranged weapons to actually benefit the build that you're using. Even if you never actually use these ranged weapons you can put these passive effects on them so you still get benefits for actually having them equipped that are actually benefiting your build, which is something that unfortunately with accessories, you can't actually change the jewels on these, which I wish they would honestly change. So with accessories, it's all about really just like re-rolling accessories or trying to find the best ones, either just by the little demon bear that'll spit out an accessory every time you give in an item, or just in general, when you're exploring the world and you get like random drops. It's really about finding ones that have accessories that have the jewels on them that benefit your build. I wouldn't worry too much about like the armor stats on them, but it's really just about those secondary bonuses that they give. The last tip that I have for you is that upgrading and like embedding will cost copper, which is like the general like currency resource, which is like super expensive to do all of this stuff. And you'll constantly run out of copper, I found. The best way to get copper, other than just, you know, going out and killing things is by selling jewel fragments because you get so much gear and you can salvage so much gear. You'll have like hundreds or thousands of jewel fragments that you can actually sell back for 1000 each to get some copper. So if you're really struggling for money it's a good way to get money but for the most part if you just go out and like grind out some enemies you'll get money anyway so but don't spend all of your jewel fragments on copper as you will need them for actually putting these jewels and embedding into your gear you do need a fair amount for that as well so so there is a balance there if you are using it for that but it's just worth pointing out if you do need a little bit of copper but just to be careful about how much you're using and lastly why not check out my fire build for a while long i've got more builds coming out as well so keep an eye on the channel thanks for watching this video till the end thank you to our members for supporting the channel my name is norzan i hope you have a great day